story, at some point it seems like a simple math problem. Uh, 5,000 men plus women plus children and five loaves and two fishes. Uh, a math problem. Um, it would certainly befuddle me, but a math problem. But if we really pay attention to what's going on here, um, it's a much deeper dilemma than that. Because what we have going on here is this huge cavern, uh, the disciples standing on one side and Jesus standing on the other side. And folks, um, we can talk about disciples of every age being on one side of the chasm and Jesus being on the other side of the chasm. But the disciples are, are looking around and, and they're watching and, and they're doing the math and, and they're operating from a theology of scarcity. There simply is not enough to go around. Jesus, on the other hand, always comes from a place of plentitude and abundance. So, to disciples of every age that stand in that place of scarcity, Jesus looks us straight in the eye and says, give them something to eat. Give them something to eat. The church, as it is um, living and being in 2017, is certainly a church globally, at least in the United States, globally is not fair, but in the United States, that is certainly experiencing that theology of, of scarcity. Uh, fewer people in many pews, fewer mo less money, less ministry, and, 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 and the sense of panic as to what it will look like. And yet, we of every age are followers of the God of abundance and plentitude that says to us, you feed them. So how do we do that, folks? How do we step into that? How do we trust? How do we follow? How do we live it out? And um, the, the two most obvious ways that we literally live, live out the feeding are our SACA ministry that we unfold um, month after month here and our FRB ministry. Today, I am gonna take the space to talk to you about the FRB ministry because I just spent uh, last week um, as, as a brand new board member on the FRB board um, in Yakima, Washington, with uh, the 25 other board members, thinking about um, our call to feed uh, those who do not have uh, the tools or the food or the ability to create reliable, sustaining um, food resources for themselves. So we're gonna back up a whole bunch of years to when I was in Dubuque, Iowa. I was invited to a, a rural ministry conference. And at that rural ministry conference, the, the notion of foods resource bank was introduced. Um, what it is, is farmers in a land of plenty, growing some crop, it doesn't matter what the crop is because the crop is sold, and, and that food, uh, not the food, the money from the food goes to farmers in a land of scarcity. And what it does is it goes to implementing agencies, they're all faith-based, they're already on the ground, they already know uh, what the hunger issues are in those lands, and that money goes there 100% and goes about the work of creating reliable, sustainable, farming practices. So back in the Midwest, um, they largely grow soybean or corn, and, and they share the work of town churches with country churches. And so I came back and I talked to the farmers in this congregation about, you know, we could section off 20 acres, and then this farmer could do this, and, this. and, and the farmers in this place looked at me like I needed some very serious mental health. So. Um, so instead, what we did is, is we took on an animal project. And, and quite frankly, across the years, the animals kind of became a, a moot point. Um, 
but we had cattle. Uh, at the end of the year, we would have a, a raffle and raffle up the cattle and, and the gifts that you so graciously share. Now, uh, like I said, in the Midwest, it's, it's all kinds of other things. Uh, we were just up in Yakima. Their growing project is an apple growing project. It, it doesn't really matter what the project is, is what it matters is we trust the one who says, you feed them and figure out how we can step up and step into that. So um, it's, it's been over a decade now that we have uh, our growing project being our, our auction and money has gone into hungry places to create reliable, sustainable farming practices. Uh, a year and a half ago, eight of us got to go and, and step into a, another world. Uh, we went to India, and in India, we went and saw um, six different FRB projects. And, and we saw the difference that a well makes. We saw the difference uh, of what happens if, if people can go um, from just a rice diet to a rice and millet diet, or a rice and millet and vegetable diet. We saw the difference of what it means for people to be uh, food reliable for three months, move to being food reliable for six months, or nine months, and even a year. Now, one of the huge ahas that we had when we were in India and hearing the stories is, I think, I think about hunger and how comfortable it is, and that I don't particularly like being hungry, um, but, but, but hunger seems to be one thing. But here's what we learned in India, is food reliability and food sustainability has absolutely everything to do with family sustainability. Because if a family can't feed their children, um, several things can happen. First of all, um, there are people that will come along and say, well, I will buy uh, those, those young children of yours and give them a much better life. And of course, that's not what happens to those young children that are sold into that. They are trafficked, uh, whether as, as uh, sex workers or as indentured servants of, of some sort. But, but that's one of the ways that families try to, to gain some sort of, of reliability, food reliability in their house and have hope for what could happen to their child. But the other thing that often happens is dad or dad and mom go off to the city in hopes of finding work. And even if they do find work, the money rarely makes it all the way back to the children, village and their children and families are, are imploded. So this business of, of feeding our neighbor, of helping our neighbor to figure out reliable, sustainable ways to feed themselves has everything to do with, with family and life and wholeness and, 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 and what it means to be community together. So shortly after we got back from India, uh, we, were, we were approached by Lutheran World Relief, and Lutheran World Relief, in conjunction with FRB, invited us into a project in the northeast of India. I, I, I could tell you it's one of the poorest parts of India, but I think all of India is one of the poorest parts of India, um, up in the northeast Bihar area. Lutheran World Relief had been working up there and um, as they prepared, uh, because it's always with an exit strategy. You go in and you create reliable, sustainable farming practices and, and you let the people then live out who they are um, as this new um, independent people. As they were preparing to leave the villages they'd been working in, they got together the women. It's almost always women in the middle of the projects. Um, and they said to the women, we're ready to go. What else can we do for you? And the women pulled their heads together and they came back and they told Lutheran World Relief, um, help our neighbors up the road. So Lutheran World Relief uh, pulled together a list of 10 churches and went to those 10 churches across the United States and said, would you give a three-year pledge of $100,000 that we can take that and make a difference in these villages in Northeast India? And Emmanuel was one of those churches. And with faith, we stepped into that three-year commitment to Lutheran World Relief and uh, uh, Foods Resource Bank to step in and to reach out and to help 
feed our neighbor, knowing that it's about teaching our neighbor to feed themselves, generation after generation after generation from now. So um, I tell you this because I just got back from uh, the uh, annual meeting. I tell you this because our FRB uh, auction is just around the corner. Uh, the last two weeks of September, uh, the first Sunday of October will be the, the final event uh, from you. Um, we need gifts that we can auction off. It can be a piece of art, it can be a weekend, it can be a service, it can be whatever your imagination um, has in mind. We need you to be there, uh, to be willing to support uh, the program and knowing that, that everything that we send goes um, to that work in Northeast India. Yesterday, one of the women who spoke um, included this quote in what she shared. She said, sometimes I want to ask God why he allows poverty, famine, and injustice in the world when he could really do something about it. But I'm afraid he might ask me the very same question. Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Amen. Well, it's a light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day I let my little light shine. Oh, Jesus gave me light, I'm gonna let it shine.